All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and yeah, I might be the last person on this planet to review this car, but hey, it's better late than never. So who do we have to thank for this honor and privilege to pilot the uh, magnificent LC500 convertible? Nobody but myself. I'm not that great at begging, but uh, I begged for this one, and Lexus finally delivered. And uh, really, I haven't even been driving this car, really. I mean, I've just been pulling up to all the nightclubs and uh, pretending like I own them. And <laughs> I, I've been driving it. I've been driving it for the last couple days now, so I have a pretty good grasp of what this thing is all about. So let's go ahead and let's get started with this little review, shall we? Um, well, actually, I thought about doing it with the top down but i don't want to jeopardize the audio so let's go ahead let's put that top back up shall we uh it takes about 16 seconds for it to go up and about 15 seconds for it to go down i remember the old sc used to take 25 seconds for it to go up and down so that's a nice little improvement i guess so you do have to hold down this button here and once that is finished there's another switch here to put up all four windows there's actually four windows with this thing so there is that just like that we're basically inside of a coupe now you honestly wouldn't even be able to tell the difference between this and sitting inside of a coupe it's that quiet it, they did that great of a job so briefly let's talk about this top because we're on the subject it's got four layers to it it does a great job in insulation no worries there but they also designed this for like the least amount of wrinkles possible so when you have the top up and when it kind of spreads out completely, there's virtually no wrinkles to it. So that's a great design that they've done there. But yeah, let's go ahead. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and let's talk about this glorious beast that we have here. So let's first of all, let's talk about the looks. Now, obviously it looks different, both top up and down from the coupe because, well, it's a convertible. And they only make this in the soft top. If they made it in a hard top, I would have been all over it, of course. Uh, kind of like a Mercedes SL or something like that. But this thing already weighs about 4,500 pounds. The coupe weighs about 4,300 pounds. So at about 200 pounds, I'm assuming if they went with an aluminum top, it would have been about 4,700 pounds. And that's that's kind of pushing it, you know, even for something like this. I'm all about a heavy curb weight car, but at 47, that's too much even for something like this. So I guess they did make the right choice with it. I love the rear haunches, dude. This thing, it comes to life when you have the top down. The rear haunches, it's a little bit more pronounced, and that's great because they have to make a little bit more room for the bracings and stuff like that. So it's, it looks a little bit different in the rear end and has a little bit more of an elongated tail going on. Uh, I'm personally a coupe guy, but let me tell you, I mean, when with the top down in this, be prepared if you're in the market for this. The attention is going to be gnarly everybody's gonna be staring at you this particular spec is the white with the red interior this flare red not the rioja red or whatever it's bright it pops it gets everybody's attention basically so just be ready for that i'm an introvert i like to be hidden behind some 20 uh, percent tint like i have in my coupe so that's just me though i mean if you if you're an extrovert man this is the car for you so you make up your own decision whether you like this or not. Uh, I'll talk about some of the difference, differences between the convertible and the coupe in a later video, but let's go ahead and let's talk about this, shall we? So this drive, put this into the sport mode here, sport plus. Reacts about as good as you need it to. That is some great performance for sure. Dude, I don't know who says that this isn't enough power, but you are flying in this thing after you reach the 4,500 RPM mark. You are just absolutely annihilating everything. So 471 horsepower, 398 pounds feet of torque. That has not changed for this five liter V8. And that was glorious. And let me tell you that noise is amplified times two with the top down. It is, dude, it'll bust people's eardrums when you do those upshifts and those downshifts. It is crazy. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to be having plenty of fun. But 
Fun is great, that, the LC has that in spades, but here's something else that the 2021 models have in spades, refinement. Now, another big change between this and my coupe is that this is riding on the 21 inch wheels, of course, same as mine, but I have the Bridgestone Potenza run flats. This one has Michelin Pilot Super Sport run flats. So I found that these tires are a lot quieter, I feel like, and we're on the highway right now, and the road noise, even the wind noise, I think, is actually a little bit less. No, the wind noise is about the same, but that's very impressive considering this is a soft top. So that's great that this is so refined. It still hugs just fine. I mean, yes, it's lost some sharpness compared to the, um, to the coupe, but that's natural, of course. This weighs a little bit more, about 200 pounds more. And also when you chop the top off, you lose some of that rigidity in the chassis as a whole. So you kind of have to deal with that. Now, obviously they had to add back in some of that rigidity through bracings and all that stuff, but it's still, it'll never compete with a traditional coupe, of course, in terms of raw solidness. Not that you really need that in the vehicle like this because you don't buy it for that reason, essentially. So I definitely do forgive her for that, but dude, let me tell you this thing, the 2021s, they ride way better than the previous generation cars. Like my 2020, this is a, this is the biggest notable change that they brought to this vehicle. Let me tell you the three main things I noticed the first time I drove this vehicle. Obviously the ride comfort and the transmission, it's a little bit sharper. They improved that for 50 to 70% uh, driving, which is what most people do with these vehicles anyway, which is why I don't mind the convertible not being as sharp as the coupes. They improved the transmission logic to downshift and just react a little bit better. That middle range power band, they've improved that. And the third thing that I noticed was the steering the steering has gotten sharper. I think a lot of that has to do with the suspension tweaks. When they change the suspension, they improve the, the steering as a byproduct essentially. And it just feels a bit tighter. It's not heavier or anything like that, just slight, slightly tighter. And I appreciate that. Now the material as a whole does feel a little bit more different. I mean, it feels more like the RCF steering wheel a little bit with the perforations. Now my car also has perforations on the steering wheel, but anyway, I'm talking about the actual steering feel. It's a little bit tighter. Now, one of the impressive things that they've done here is they've reduced the unsprung weight by 22 pounds. They accomplished that by using more aluminum in the suspension and also the rear wheels, the rear 21 inch wheels got a little bit lighter, which I found kind of strange. I don't know why just the rear wheels, but whatever. But my gosh, dude, this is such a glorious car to just cruise around in. I mean, you're a pimp, you're a baller when you pull up in this thing man i mean even people who don't know what cars are basically who don't know what this is who don't know anything about cars they gawk at it they love it they appreciate it and even these zero to 60 freaks even they appreciate this car when they drive it because let me tell you i have owned my 2020 coupe for about four months now and it feels like four days basically just time flies when you're having fun i guess right it's one of the most glorious purchases you're ever going to make. And no car has made me feel this happy. I've driven your zero to 60, you know, Messiahs, your C7s, your C8 Corvettes, the 911s, the everything. I've driven all of them. Honestly, this is way more fun out on the road. With these uh, refinement changes, it's almost kind of spooky. Uh, it does not have air suspension or anything like that, but it damn near rides close to it, actually. It's not as good as the, you know, ESs or the LSs or anything like that in terms of ride quality, but it's... Nearest makes no difference, that's for sure. And it's got a Yamaha damper in the rear, and I think that's bespoke to the convertibles. The coupes don't have that. The coupes get everything else in terms of the suspension tweaks that they made, but I think this Yamaha damper, it has definitely helped with the ride quality as well. So that's pretty cool. But yes, I know it doesn't make any sense on paper, but it is by far the best just, it's not even the best handling, it's not the fastest, but somehow it is the best. I don't know what it is. Cars that don't deliver on the spec sheet, are the best here, right here. What I'm doing right now, driving it. The cars I do deliver on the specs, like the C8 Corvette, literally one of the most boring cars I've ever driven. I have friends who own both the C7s and C8s, and I love those guys, but man, I have to say it the way it is. I just, it was not fun driving those those cars, those, those vets. I had more fun driving the C6 Corvette than I do the new one, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, so specs aren't everything. I like 911s and stuff like that, especially with the manual transmission, but dude, it's just not the same. It, it doesn't have the exhilaration that this vehicle has to offer. This is just 
a gnarly experience and with the top down it just enhances it twice like two full basically so let me talk more about that convertible before we um go into that interior segment so a couple of things to note when driving with the top down so it's a whole nother experience when you if you've never owned a convertible car before well it's a unique treat it makes a car feel totally different from its kind of coupe counterparts if it exists in this case it does like i mentioned the sound is twice as loud with the top down essentially it's not the same as just driving around with the windows down in any other car also i drove the this car with the top down out on the highway and it's really good it's tolerable but you have to have all four windows up to do it and you can totally do it i don't feel any discomfort driving the convertible in multiple different scenarios i even drove this car with the top down in the rain a little bit uh it wasn't pouring or anything like that but i've noticed the rain didn't really get inside the uh inside the cabin that was kind of unique to me i i wasn't expecting that but okay also the way the wind blows has a lot to do with it anyway but yeah i don't feel fatigued when i drive around with the top down i i was driving around with the top down for an extended period of time and it did not bother me one bit but also you know the plushness of this ride it's just great but here that's talking about the convertible now let me tell you about if you have a 2020 lc 500 don't fret it's not a big deal you did not make a bad decision by going with the 2019 slash 2020 over the over this model year okay let me tell you why because if you own a 2019 and up you're doing great because they made a lot of great changes with that car in 2019 they also sharpened up the transmission compared to the 2018s and they also improved the ride a little bit as well they kind of retuned the adaptive suspension all that stuff it's just they took those changes a step further here but it's not necessary i went back and i drove my coupe and i was just as happy in that i, I had no need to upgrade to this but i'm just saying if you're in the new car market you might want to uh consider this and really consider maybe driving the coupe as well uh i don't have a good grasp on how the 2021 coupe feels because i haven't driven it nor have i driven a 2018 or a vehicle with the performance package if you're looking at the convertibles and you like the performance package, well, you can't get the rear wheel steering with these cars. The performance package does not exist with the convertible. So another thing you have to keep in mind with this vehicle. Yeah, don't worry. If you have a 2020, don't, don't even worry about it. I'm not just saying that, just be saying it. I own one and it's not a big deal. Uh, you'll be happy with either. I mean, if you get a good deal on a 2020, take it. Um, but yes, if you value that ride quality, my gosh, man, go for it. This is fantastic. A lot of people in this buying demographic will appreciate that. You're probably gonna be an older gent, probably in your 50s maybe, about to uh, retire early. You've got a couple mil sitting in the mutual funds, about to cash that out, I feel you. This is a pretty good car to cash out on, a 2021 with all that ride quality. It's pretty great. Now enough of that, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior. So the interior actually remains pretty much unchanged from the coupes or the other generation vehicles. The same layout, it's beautiful. This is the red interior of course but they'd made changes to the red interior this is now a flare red not the circuit red a flare red so it's a little bit brighter it pops a little bit but something interesting that they've done they've actually kept the rioja red <laughs> color around some of the inserts here which i found kind of interesting you let me know if you like that i guess it's an interesting way of breaking up the the red colors but i kind of wish they personally just kept it all the same color but i don't mind this it doesn't offend me or anything like that but it's just something i noticed now another big change that they made that in the interior that I think a lot of people are gonna like is they've changed the leather. So the seats, they are full leather seats now. They don't have the Alcantara suede-ish insert that the previous generation cars had like mine. This is full leather and a lot of people complained that they didn't really like the suede inserts in the seats while well, they fixed that here i think a lot more people are gonna like it it's still a nice plush comfy seat uh feels similar to sitting in my uh seat as well so i don't really mind that i personally do like the suede inserts though but that's just my preference you look at the door panel they've changed that suede insert as well people don't like suede because people think that it doesn't age as well honestly the suede was pretty well done in that vehicle but in this it's more of a I don't even know what this is. It's more like a like a mesh. Like it's a very interesting durable material being used here. I uh, still got the same kind of pattern flowing lines. It's still a beautiful place to spend time. I still love this interior cabinets. Bar not like it is the best interior you're ever going to be in for this 
category of vehicle, number one interior. I'm not just talking about fit and finish, which that's also number one, but this car makes every other interior look like a Motel 6 bathroom. This and the LS, number one interiors, love it. So enjoy that. You got one touch up and down windows, which control these two windows. You have to utilize this center piece here to access the other two windows in the rear. Yeah, everything else is the same. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. The rest of the interior is actually kind of black, uh, which I think a lot of people do like because black does wear out a little bit better. Obviously, you touch the steering wheel every day. Also, I, like I mentioned, the steering wheel feels a little bit more different here. It feels more like I'm gripping onto an RCF steering wheel. I don't know what that is. No flat bottom or anything like that, but you know everything else, the gauge clutch is the same. Infotainment, big change that they made, Android Auto for 2021. Previous cars did not have that. Previous cars had Apple CarPlay, but not Android Auto. So I have an Android phone. This one has the Android Auto. So there's that for Android users. This one is fitted with the Mark Levinson. St still sounds fantastic. Still has a CD player. Climate control totally separated. Infotainment is still used the same way. I mean, I've said multiple times that I don't mind this infotainment one bit. I just hate how all the heated seat controls and all the heated steering wheel, all that stuff is kind of buried into the screen. That kind of sucks. It's the same way here. And you also have another bit of heating here, and that is the headrest. The headrest, it has like that Mercedes air scarf thing going on, so there is that. You can really, even when it gets a little bit chilly out, you can actually drive this with the top down. I, I'm assuming it's kind of getting colder here now in NC, and you can probably still drive this with the top down, no real issues. You put the heated air scarf thing on, heated seats, heated steering wheel, you can actually still pilot this with the windows up, top down, no issues. Rear seats, complete joke. Don't even get me started on that. Now, rear seat comfort, obviously it's non-existent. That's trash. Don't even, actually, funny thing about the rear seats, they actually use the uh, the headrest in the rear as like a speaker grill, basically, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and you have the big Mark Levinson thing in the back as well. Trunk space is less than the coupe even. Uh, not by much, but just by a little bit. Where the top stows is actually where the hybrid battery pack would have been. Obviously there is no LC, convertible hybrid or anything like that. The LC Coupe already didn't have a big trunk, so this one having a little bit less space, it doesn't really bother me because you don't buy this for practicality. It's not a big deal, basically. You buy this, let me reiterate, as an experience, not even as a car. Honestly, the amount of money that they charge for this, it's peanuts. 100, 110 Gs, that's nothing for a car like this. They could, You can pay a quarter million dollars and still be worth it every car there's like a level of diminishing returns i don't think cars are worth much past like 150 grand but this is one of the few cars you can pay a quarter mil for it and it'll still be appropriate they could have easily charge 150 for these cars but they don't primarily because you don't respect it you don't respect the fact that this car is more than just spec sheets you don't respect the fact that it's an experience and a true driving experience over these other cars that are just solely based upon specs and improving and impressing on paper this is more than that you can own this car for decades and still be happy with it hell some people are saying that this might even be a classic car so you know you might see this car going up in value i don't know but that's just speculation but hey all the characteristics are there for it to go up in value it's limited production nobody buys it it's a five liter naturally aspirated that's non-existent basically and it's, as you saw on the highway, it still pulls. This is more than enough for the street. This is the best street car I have ever experienced, hands down. And I'm not just saying that just to be saying it. The convertible just enhances that experience. So in the next video you're going to see, I'm going to be comparing this to my coupe. And we're going to be seeing what the key differences are between the two cars and what experiences that they have to offer to the buyer. So stay tuned for that. Thank you again for watching this review. Take care and goodbye.